Welcome back. In this video, we're going to head and look into credentials and how those are leveraged and stored within Mythic. So if you ever want to see what credentials you have already associated with your operation, come up here to operational views, credentials. Now this is something you can either populate manually or uh, in a specific agent command, you can have it report back these credentials as it finds them. The reason we have it this way is that there it's easier for the operation to report this information back via the agent than for Mythic itself to try and have some sort of regex parser for all kinds of credentials from Mimikatz, from maybe uh, keychain dumpers, from different things on Linux, from parsing out images, like all these sorts of things are not really the responsibility of the Mythic framework itself to handle. It should be the agent that knows what it's doing to the target to then be able to parse out the, the credentials that it's getting. So let's go ahead and add in a credential. We'll make this a plain text credential. There are a whole bunch of different kinds you can have here to kind of make things a bit more intuitive for you as the operator. Maybe you're dealing with hashes, API keys, certificates. Maybe you just have some sort of hex blob that you got from some sort of dumping ability. All these makes it easier for you to handle what it is you're dealing with. So for us, we'll go ahead and add in a plain text credential for the, it's a feature account. The realm is the domain in which this applies. It may not always apply in every operation for every command. Maybe it doesn't need it to be able to operate. Uh, in our case, it doesn't matter. You can just say local host or whatever. A comment, if you want to add a comment of how you got the credential, this is stuff that's always editable later. And then the actual credential itself. So the password that we have for the it's a feature account is it's a password. So go ahead and hit submit. And now we'll have it pop up, over, pop up over here. So again, plain text, it's a feature, it's a password. So this is just a credential in here. Now if we want to come up here and go to active callbacks, let's use that credential to do something. So with the JXA app fell payload, this is using JavaScript for automation to execute things on host. It is single threaded. So trying to do things like sudo in a command is not going to work because it's going to sit there and wait for the user to type in something. Ideally, the user isn't there to be able to type it in or knows what's going on. So you want to, if you already have the password, you want to just leverage that yourself. So there is an ability to go ahead and do that. That's this shell elevated command. JXA and AppleScript overall allows an opportunity already, if you have explicit credentials, to leverage them to execute commands. So let's go ahead and use that. We'll select the credential that we have. It's a password with this user. It's a feature. We want to use these credentials instead of prompting the user for them. And what command are we going to run? We can just run who am I? A simple command and see what's going on. So again, here, this is single threaded. Make sure you aren't accidentally doing things that will wait for user input. So we submit that. You know, this is what we want to run. The password, are we prompting? And you can see right here, we got back root. So it went through and executed successfully. If you're curious, at least with the AppFill agent and using these credentials on a host, you can use the special test password feature, which is an API call that uh, macOS allows you to use under the hood to test local passwords to see if they match. I haven't found any sort of lockout feature with this yet, but always be careful because AppFill will change things under the hood all the time. But uh, we'll go ahead and set its password, the username, it's a feature, and we'll go ahead and test and see if this password matches this user. This is a handy way to test before you start doing things that might require it and kind of potentially fail. So whenever it picks it up, uh, it'll go ahead and report back, um, yep, successful authentication. So this password does match this username. So just a handy way to go through and do extra validation. 